Hi, my name is Paul Haas, and this is my talk on advanced format string attacks. Go, Paul A. Um, a little bit of background um, contents of this is going to be a little bit of background on me, um, an abstract of what format strings are, how you exploit them, a definition of sort of the, um, the way in which C functions are made vulnerable to it, um, context in terms of old, current, and new um, attacks. Um, I'm going to show you my new, um, new techniques for exploiting them and actually go through a couple of demos um, before actually showing you a couple of um, you know, full exploits, um, you know, popping, popping root shells without doing any work. Um, then I'm going to show you my tools, how I do it, um, finally leading to you know, a conclusion and Q&A. So I work for Redspin um, Incorporated as the lead web um, application security engineer. This talk isn't associated with that at all, it's just for fun and uh, you know, because I like doing some binary analysis type of stuff. Um, I'm a former CTF champion here at DEF CON, so you know, hopefully I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you guys will make a decision for me. And for those of you who don't play Mario Kart apparently, it's all about robot and tank on Rainbow Road. So the purpose of this talk is to take a vulnerable program like this, get a shell without doing any of this. So a little bit of beef, brief background, format string attacks for those who don't know or a vulnerability in a type of C function, uh, printf type functions that basically can lead to shell code executed. Um, even though it's been sort of resolved, um, ignorance and vulnerability still exist. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. Um, you know, it's especially common in academic exercises, um, CTFs, a lot of legacy pen tests. Um, the reason I brought this up is actually because one of our clients had this issue and I didn't feel like doing any additional work on it. So I created a tool to exploit it for me. Um, you know, this name of the talk is Advanced Format String Attacks, so I assume you know a little bit about what format string attacks actually do and how they work. Um, thankfully, the tools I'm going to be talking about don't require any knowledge. They're pretty much point and click, as, as you'll see. Brief history, uh, format string attacks have been around for about 20 years, um, sort of re reaching the apex around 2000 for you know, being popular, being really well known. Um, the last um, format string attack that I've, that I've seen has been in um, 2010, so you know, they still all are, all are around, as you can, as you can see. Um, the old technique um, used to be really kind of a pain to create. It required a, a long string of doing these manual popping using, you know, percent %x, percent %p um, in order to sort of get to your interesting data on the stack. Um, often when you want to actually create the exploit, you have to use a variety of other tools, um, you know, look, through, look for shellcode in your core um, after a seg fault. Um, basically, you know, it's a lot of having to, you know, read the manual, you know, consult the document, you know, and then once you wrote it for one, you know, program, you couldn't take that work and then bring it anywhere else, so. You know, the current has improved a little bit on this, but not much. Um, it's still sort of the same technique. Um, you know, some of the advances have been direct parameter access. So rather than having, rather than having to pop, say, 10 things off the stack, you can just reference the 10th parameter directly. Um, but again, you still needed to sort of use external tools to access, you know, where you want to actually overwrite your code for. The technique, technique that I've been working on basically utilizes the information that because you're dumping the stack and the stack of most programs, C programs, has interesting information in it, you can use this information to basically leverage piece by piece of exploit leading to the eventual you know, compromise of the application. For example, most stacks contain data, uh, code addresses, you know, addresses that point to code 
as well addresses to point to other information on the stack, such as you know data pointers or code pointers. Um, and what's also interesting is that the string that we pass for a format string attack is also on the stack, so we can locate that as well as as well as, as well as its offset. And with this information, we basically can locate the address of anything on the stack, which is useful, for example, if we find a code pointer that we want to overwrite on the stack, we can know, find out the address of that um, pointer and then overwrite it with our format string attack. So here's the vulnerable code that I've been using. Um, obviously, it's not going to work in secure environments, but um, you know, you still see a lot of a lot of this, you know, bits and pieces here and there. So, you know, I wouldn't be expected, you know, I would be pretty expected to see it in, you know, a couple of pen tests that I've been doing for legacy applications. Um, let's talk about a, a little bit about the exploit steps for my new method. I first dump the stack um, using, you know, an exploit string until I find that exploit string on the stack. I then find the address of that, um, off that format string address on the stack. Then by finding the physical location and the pointer to that location, I basically can calculate the address of any other stack pointer or stack um, you know, data that's present in my dump. Um, this basically allows me, if I find any you know, code pointers or return addresses, to say I can overwrite that address to point back to my shell code, which is also on the stack. Um, one note with this is because I'm sort of leveraging multiple executions of a program to drive this information, um, it's really helpful to keep the format string length constant because if you change it around, still do stack values and stack addresses, and since you need that information to be relatively constant, it helps to basically just keep the same, same format string length across all these different runs as I'll show you. The first, um, first thing you have to do, stack dumps, um, two methods. One, you just dump you know, the whole stack at once using um, you know, a, a bunch of percent P's or percent X's. Um, second method is to execute a loop with you know, incrementing values. Um, in this case, I have here just a little bash script. Um, I'll show you a demo of this. that that does it and makes it really convenient to show what's on the data or what's on the stack. Um, you then take this stack information, which is um, based on percent %p or percent %x is going to be code pointers, and you actually want to convert it to the you know, string representation of that data. By doing that, you basically can find the, the actual string that's located through those pointers. Um, and then by doing that, you can find the offset of that string from the stack dump. So right here I have a you know, decently long um, one-liner for bash. Um, this is basically running um, our vulnerable print f function. So basically this, func this function when you pass it um, a string, basically just prints it to the um, command line. And you can see it's actually vulnerable to you know, a trivial format string attack, basically. Oops, sorry about that. So this one liner basically is going to loop through the printf, um, you know, sending incremental values on the stack in order to see what's what's there basically. So what this is, this is the offset that I'm passing. This happens to be the string that I'm passing to printf. This is the, what printf returns to me, a code or stack pointer. And this is actually what that resolves to in terms of a string. So scrolling up, let's see if I can find where I'm looking for. You see that at about offset 138, sort of divided between offset 137 to 139, 
we have percentage $138 sign, which happens to be what I passed on the command line to printf. So here we've used knowledge of the exploit to basically find our string at offset 130, 137, 138. So we use that in a future step to sort of help exploit the program. The next thing we have to, the next thing we have to do, format string address. Now that we have the physical location on the stack, we want to find the pointer to that, um, to that string. Um, two ways to do this as well, um, a sequential loop as we did before, um, which will cause seg faults in the case of if the pointer at the given offset isn't actually a pointer but some data value, it's going to seg fault. Um, which might not be good in certain environments, for example, if, you know, on a pen test, if there's, you know, aggressive IDS systems. Um, the other way to do it, the more sneaky way is, given the stack dump, since we already have all that list, since we have a list of pointers already, we can parse that list for values that actually are, are on the stack and then just obtain the offsets from those values only. This avoids seg faults is a little bit more, um, you know, elegant and, you know, can get bought, allows us to basically dump all strings in just one run of the program, basically. So let me show you the, the first brute force method. Because it's a little bit more easy to run on the command line. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. Very good. <laughs> so, same thing, a loop here, basically. Um, one liner that's going to basically pass a bunch of things to the same printf function um, and try to get both the value as a pointer of the location as well as a string. So you can see here that, again, it's dumping offsets, showing, for example, what's the value, the pointer value, as well as the string that that pointer resolves to. So going back up a little bit, let's see if we can find it. So at offset 38, pointer uh, that ends with 608 actually references itself um, telling us that that pointer value actually resolves to our pass argument. Um, this is the second step of the, the attack, basically. So given this offset that we found in the first stack dump and the address that we found in the second, we basically have a method to allow arbitrary win on the stack. Um, we know that since offset 100 is at, for example, um, stack pointer BFFFF 100, and we know that a pointer is four bytes, we know, for example, that offset one is going to be minus 400 um, values from that offset, basically. So we have re a return address at offset 10. We can calculate the return or the stack offset of that. And then when we're attempting our exploit, we don't have to get, um, you know, for example, detours or program, program link table or some other overwrite location. We can just overwrite this location on the stack, which we've already found from a previous step. Um, even though it's possible, for example, in advanced format string attacks to sort of extract this information, we want to be sort of lazy and just have, you know, this operations from previous steps do our work for us. Um, you know, two methods to do this as well. Um, if we know what a return address looks like, um, they're pretty common on most, um, you know, Linux systems, we can use those. Or we can also guess them using sort of an algorithm that matches values that are close to each other that aren't data and aren't strings. Or we can also be lazy and just brute force everything on the stack until, you know, our, our exploit succeeds, basically, which is a lot easier to, to do, basically. Um, some issues with this new technique. Um, as I mentioned, if we change the length of our format string, it's basically in effect 
um, addresses on the stack. Since our format string basically, as it grows, so does so do stack values.